your mood is not improved. Uh, it, so stock, <laughs> stocks are, uh, if you didn't like stocks a month or two ago when you were on, um, you must like them even less now and because they're a lot more extended than the, than the last time you were on, I think, Mark. And, and you, you still think risk reward doesn't favor stocks. No, Joe, actually, I'm, uh, I've come around in my opinion, and the reason has been the Fed. The Fed is, a year ago had the uh, smallest balance sheet of the major central banks, and now they're the biggest at $7.1 trillion. And the Fed is basically setting a floor. They're buying ETFs, as you know. They're going to start buying corporate bonds. They're going to be buying high-yield bonds. And they're setting a floor underneath the... Uh, bond markets, which spills over into the equity market. So I'm much more uh, optimistic about uh, where equities are going. I think they're going uh, higher from here. But even as you recall, uh, you know, a month ago or so when we talked about this, a lot of people were incredibly negative. I said they might uh, come off some, but I certainly wasn't in the camp where they were going to come off a lot. And now I've uh, become much more positive because you can't fight the Fed, they make the money, and uh, you got to pay attention to what they're doing, and they're uh, setting a floor underneath all the uh, markets. Yeah, um, I guess if you don't feel a lot of unease that you must, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about anybody that, that says, well, look at the Fed, uh, the market's where it is because of the Fed, you must be counting on the underlying economy at some point catching up uh, because of all the, the cheap money, you would think fundamentals eventually need to at least get a little more in line with where the financial markets are because there's such a disconnect right now. Or can it just go on for, for forever? And if it does, it just seems like the day of reckoning gets bigger and bigger for, for what we, uh, we have to face in the future from all this easy money around the world. Well, the day of reckoning really has to do, in my opinion, Joe, with the amount that the uh, U.S. Treasury is borrowing. The Fed, however, to their credit, and I mean to their credit, has stepped up, and we have incredibly low interest rates because of what the Fed is doing. And so the cost of the uh, U.S. government borrowing money is, you know, right off of zero at this point. And... Uh, I think that the Fed is going to continue to do what they're doing. I think they may grow their balance sheet uh, even more. So I don't see a day of reckoning anytime soon at this point. I think if the Fed keeps going the way they're going, it's going to keep kicking uh, equities up for quite some time. The disconnect in the economy, I mean, we're getting better. It's not as bad as a lot of people thought it was going to be. So I think uh, between the... Uh, Economic numbers, which certainly aren't good, but as I said, not as bad as many people thought. And between what the Fed is doing, Joe, you have no idea how big of an impact the Fed buying ETFs and corporate bonds and high-yield bonds besides their normal treasuries and uh, agency securities is having on this market. As a matter of fact, what it's, it's really created here is what I call a borrower's paradise because you can borrow off of nothing. Uh, mortgages, corporations, you're seeing a huge influx of new corporate debt, and it's created a fixed income investor's hell, if you will, because there's virtually no place to get any yield. I keep pointing to the close, some closed-end funds that pay monthly, so here's money every month, where you can get some double-digit returns if you know what you're doing, but it's very difficult to find any yield in here, whether it's for a bank, for an individual, for a senior, a retiree, a pension fund, university endowment, and that's becoming a huge problem in my opinion.